Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, thanks for coming. Um, my project, uh, From Commuter to Community, it's a story about change and uh, opportunity. Um, how we get around our transportation technology affects how we relate to our environment. Uh, and this, as, the, as the technology changes, so do our space needs. And as these needs shift, uh, we have an opportunity to rethink how we share space between vehicles and people. Uh, so the site I chose to explore this idea uh, has experienced a lot of change uh, over its relatively short history. Uh, California Route 2 between I-5 and Glendale Boulevard uh, on the Echo Park Silver Lake border was built to connect to the never built uh, Beverly Hills Freeway. And prior to this, the area was part of the right of way uh, for the uh, Pacific Electric Glendale Burbank rail line. Uh, the road is tucked in a densely populated hilly area between the two neighborhoods, uh, connecting to Elysian Valley on the far side of the ridge. Um, the area's hilly topography is uh, both a challenge as well as a great opportunity. Uh, since the roadway was intended to connect to a crosstown freeway, it was built with a capacity of 11,000 vehicles per hour per direction. Uh, however, the road now dead ends in, onto uh, surface roads with a maximum peak flow of 3,200 vehicles per hour. Uh, so over its entire lifetime, the roadway has had never used capacity, uh, locking up precious space in a dense urban community. Uh, and at the same time, we're on the verge of some new potentially transformative changes in uh, transportation technology. Uh, from autonomous vehicles to on-demand transport and micromobility, uh, and transportation planners are already looking at how these technologies will change our urban infrastructure. And ultimately, they're all finding that these changes will unlock even more space formerly reserved for vehicles. Um, so the goals of this project are twofold. Uh, first, in the near term, to carve a haven for people and community out of space that's been surrendered to cars. Uh, and in the long term, to help shape the future of our urban spaces by imagining possibilities uh, as, land, as more land is able to be reclaimed. Uh, as I noted earlier, uh, the surrounding neighborhoods are quite hilly, and as they first developed around the Pacific Electric and LA uh, railway lines, uh, many public stairwells or stairways were built to connect the residents in the hills uh, to the rail lines on the streets below. Um, while they're much less used presently, the public stairways still do exist, uh, giving the area the potential to reconnect through uh, walking. Uh, there's also a wide diversity of land use within the walking within walking distance of the site. Uh, it's reflective of the neighborhood's development both before and after the advent of the freeway system and as to the walking potential of the neighborhood. Uh, the Project for Public Spaces promotes an idea called the Power of 10 Plus uh, that suggests the diversity of 10 or more destinations, places, or things to do in a city, neighborhood, or place is integral to its success as a, as a public place, and this project hopes to add to this diversity. Um, the quite, site is quite narrow and is wedged between uh, the two hilly ridges I mentioned earlier. Uh, so creating, it creates a complex topography as well as interesting opportunities for views and sun uh, because of the changes in elevation and orientation. As the site is currently mostly roadway, there are some opportunities for infrastructure reuse. Um, the current configuration of the site allocates most of the space to high speed and high capacity vehicular circulation uh, to the detriment of all other users, uh, pedestrians, bicyclists, and others. And this collision of a high-speed, high-capacity road into a local street grid uh, creates areas of conflict and essentially discourages any discretionary non-automobile use, which creates a space that is essentially a place for cars. Um, so the opportunity here comes from condensing the current roadway, uh, reducing lanes and right-sizing it for the roads and neighborhood that it dead ends into, and reallocating that liberated space uh, to the community. And so instead of spreading out traffic across multiple corridors, uh, the idea here is to consolidate the traffic into one combined corridor, uh, which opens up a blank slate on which to plan a park and community space to benefit the neighborhood. Uh, the site is topographically complex, uh, both in the natural topography of the area, as well as the man-made topography of the built highways, engineering of overpasses, and flyovers, and retaining walls. Uh, the design of the site will take advantage of these elevation change, changes and previously built structures uh, when, whenever possible and advantageous. Um, Echo Park and Silver Lake are uh, both very diverse racially and economically. So any design solutions will need to appeal to this wide audience uh, and will need to incorporate elements that that'll appeal to the entire community and allow everyone to see themselves reflected in the space. So to that end, a central element of the park will be its community garden, which will act as a primary magnet for the community, uh, not only for those that have a garden plot, but also to the wider community uh, through incorporation of elements accessible to all, such as community composting uh, and a demonstration kitchen and cafe. Uh, alongside the community garden, all the other elements of the park, including picnicking areas, sport fields, walking trails, gathering spaces, and reflecting spaces, will also need to account for this diversity and make sure that everyone from the surrounding community is able to find a space for themselves. Um, so the central idea uh, metaphor that I had for this was layers. Uh, its concept is reflected in several aspects of the park, 
uh, from the layers of history and use uh, to the geology and topography uh, to the diversity of cultures that have been layered onto the neighborhood. Uh, this concept will be woven into uh, all aspects of the park design from layout to fixtures. So as I was thinking through the concept of development, I kept in mind a few historical precedents and inspirations, um, starting with the uh, Moray terraces outside Cusco, Peru. Uh, these were an ancient Incan agricultural laboratory uh, where the terracing and orientation uh, creates a temperature differential of 27 degrees Fahrenheit between the top and bottommost terraces. Um, so I, I felt like there's an opportunity in this park to maybe create similar microclimates, of course, on a much smaller scale. Um, Supercalum Park in Copenhagen, Denmark, uh, was built in that city's primarily dis or primary disadvantaged uh, immigrant neighborhood and was an exercise in extreme inclusion. Uh, one of its primary features being a collection of objects and symbology from around the world, uh, which literally gave the residents of the neighborhood a place to see themselves reflected in the environment. Uh, Octavia Boulevard in San Francisco uh, is a replacement of a highway viaduct that similarly dead ended into an urban community. Uh, the project replaced the highway with a tree-lined boulevard and adjacent green space and parks, uh, replacing the structure that formerly divided and loomed over the neighborhood into an urban oasis that gathered the community instead of driving them away. And finally, uh, the Beltline in Atlanta, Georgia is another infra inf infrastructure reuse project, uh, which utilized an abandoned rail line to create gathering space for the neighboring communities. Uh, the linear layout of the park uh, gave it opportunity and space to reflect each of the neighborhoods it passed through, uh, while it's large scale necessitated an ad hoc community engagement to help drive interest. So progressing to concept development, I identified five primary elements uh, that encompass the whole of the pro proposed program of the park, uh, community garden, civic space, active recreation, passive recreation, and a community center. Um, so inspired by the design metaphor, I began layering these different elements uh, as they don't exist in isolation, but rather have meaningful overlap. Uh, narrowing my initial concepts to four, I identified each of them by how they dealt with the reuse of the highway overpass, um, from using the overpass as a civic or community garden space to removing it completely. Um, the two concepts uh, that most informed my final design were concepts A and B, uh, the plaza overpass and the garden overpass. Uh, first concept looked at using overpass as a civic plaza uh, with shaded seating as well as a stage element. Um, the community garden flows from the flat spaces of the former ball field down a couple of street facing terraces, uh, bringing a visual identity to the garden. Uh, the second concept uh, used the overpass as a community garden space, uh, while the slopes facing Glendale uh, Boulevard were transformed uh, into a terrace parking, a terrace plaza flanked by a grand staircase, an accessible promenade bringing visitors up to the community cafe and kitchen at the top of the hill. Uh, the active and passive recreation were tucked into the valley next to the reconfigured highway too. Um, so the final concept combined elements from A and B, uh, including the arcing sweep of the major pedestrian access from concept B, uh, combined with concept A's transformation uh, of the overpass to civic space. In this final design, uh, the five primary program elements that I identified earlier uh, have been rebranded as the garden, the kitchen, the plaza, the field, and the valley, um, all connected by the major axis of the wall. So it's a very um, large and complex space. So I'm gonna take you through it in two sweeps. Uh, first to establish the physical structure of the space. And then I'll take you through some short vignettes of how that show how I hope and imagine the community will use the space. Um, the park is split into two major sections with Glendale Boulevard providing a natural division uh, spanned by a bridge. On the south side of the bridge are the community hubs of the garden, the plaza and the kitchen. Uh, while the north side contains the recreation hubs of the field and the valley. Uh, the garden and the plaza span a slope which formerly held a softball field and off-ramp. Uh, the wide open expanse of the softball field is a comfortable fit for the community garden, uh, while the more severely sloped area which held the off-ramp needed some terracing to unlock the utility of the space. Uh, here we can see how the community garden, while centrally located, is, is sited comfortably above the activity of Glendale Boulevard. Uh, the plots consist of 10 by 10 raised beds, uh, and in the middle of the garden is a shaded gathering space for the community gardeners to rest and catch up. Uh, the Terrace Pat Plaza uh, provides space for people that relates to the street, but keeps enough breathing room. The lower terrace, here called the Arrival Terrace, uh, is where, uh, sorry, is where the space uh, for rideshare drop-off and pickup, uh, bus stop, and bike and scooter share parking. Uh, this area also holds a marketplace, a space for neighborhood vendors. Uh, the upper terrace consists of a set of outdoor conversational nooks set into landscaped areas, uh, providing a space for friends to gather and chat. Uh, between the two is the gallery wall, which will be used for any number of community art or, or performance exhibitions. A little further up, uh, to traverse up the hill created by the old overpass earthworks, which we kept, uh, is a grand staircase. It's a call out to the many staircases in the neighborhood. 
uh, while for those less keen on stairways, uh, there's a more gentle path up called the stroll. Uh, from the top of the hill, you connect over the bridge and pier spanning Glendale Boulevard. Uh, up the hill, the kitchen holds a demonstration garden and kitchen and outdoor cafe, as well as housing support services for the community garden, such as storage space and a tool library. Uh, the garden plaza over here allows access for vehicles uh, to support both the community garden and the kitchen, uh, but can be utilized as public space based when not needed for that purpose. Uh, where the old overpass is, is a new pedestrian bridge, uh, which utilizes the old support columns of the old overpass. Uh, in the middle of the bridge is an overlook uh, reminiscent of a pier and providing a unique space and vantage point for residents to experience the neighborhood. Uh, further up into the recreational space, uh, the field here is sunken on the northern section of the old overpass's earthworks. Uh, the sinking of the field was inspired by my college days of playing intramural sports on similarly sunken fields in the middle of the city streets of Chicago. And as I discovered then, uh, the slight elevation difference worked extremely well at keeping errant balls from rolling away, as well as giving a nice sense of enclosure. A pedestrian bridge spans California 2 to provide easier access to the space for residents on the far side of the road, uh, while the bridge across Glendale turns into a multi-use trail, which continues north into the valley, uh, which is a series of meadows and the uh, aforementioned multi-use trail that will eventually link to the LA River path in the Elysian Valley. Now, demolishing half a highway probably leaves a lot of rubble, uh, which is a great opportunity for reuse uh, in the form of gabion walls and structures used throughout the space. And thematically, this reuse also speaks to the possibilities and transformation of materials and space as we are able to take more uh, of, our, of our land back from vehicles. In that vein, uh, separating the park from California 2 would be a gabion wall constructed from that rubble. Uh, the train on the park side of the wall would be adjusted to keep the wall as unimposing as possible, uh, keeping its relative height at or below uh, six feet. Now, as I was designing the park, uh, my overarching goal was to create a space that held myriad possibilities for the neighborhood and its residents. Uh, so I was constantly thinking and imagining how I saw people using the space. Uh, so finally, I'd like to take you on a, on a tour of how I imagined a day, uh, a, a day in the life of the park. Uh, first up uh, is Marisol's afternoon in the garden. Uh, she lives nearby and walks to the community lockers where she keeps her garden tools. Uh, on her way to the plot, to her plot, rather, she stops by the community composting bin uh, to drop off some food scraps from home and pick up some compost to amend her soil. Spending some time ready in the bed for a new season of vegetables, uh, she spends time tending to her garden and harvesting whatever is available. But when she's had a bit too much sun, she takes a break to catch some shade and chat with friends under the central trellis. Next up is Marcus, who is meeting up with a friend at the plaza. Marcus takes the bus, the 92 bus down from Atwater, which is a quick and easy ride uh, that drops him off right at the, at the front of the, at the foot of the park. Um, he sees that his favorite food truck is there at the marketplace that day. So he stops to pick up some street meats. On his way up to meet his friend uh, on the terrace, he sees that there's a new exhibit at the gallery wall. He takes a few moments to check it out. Finally, his friend has scoped out a seat and Marcus joins him to tuck into a sandwich and catch up. On the far side of the park is Megan, uh, who has a soccer game at the field in the morning, uh, and will afterwards meet up with friends at the kitchen. Megan walks to the field from her house in Echo Park, uh, walking down Alessandro Street and crossing the pedestrian bridge over California 2. Meeting up with her team on the field, they proceed to play a great game with Megan scoring the winning goal. After a quick change in the nearby restroom, she walks south towards the kitchen, first passing the bridge pier and proceeding down the steps. Finally meeting up with her friends at one of the outdoor tables. And finally, we have Maya and Marcia up in the valley. They have a quick picnic on the meadows alongside others enjoying the afternoon sun. But after deciding that maybe they've had a bit too much of it, they head to the bike share rack to pick up a couple of bikes so they can head north on the trail to the LA River bike path. These are just four short examples of what I hope to be many such stories uh, in the life of this park and its community. Uh, thank you.